Welcome back. I'm Stephanie Cans with Not So Shabby. And we are going to continue working on this vintage French Provencial. I've already cleaned it, dusted out the inside, taken the drawers out, taken the handles out. I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me unscrew handles. Here are the French Provencial handles. I will be spray painting those shortly. First thing we're going to do, do you remember the first thing, is to shellac the piece. I do want to let you know that you do not need to shellac a piece of furniture if it's going to be a dark color that you're painting. It's only if it's a light color that you're painting to, again, prevent, prevent the tannins in the wood from bleeding out into your beautiful piece of furniture. So here is my handy duty chalk painting brush that I have covered with one of these gloves. And you can see, I mean, I used this maybe two days ago. It's still wet and tacky from being held in the glove wrapped in that cloth. It keeps it wet. So I'm almost actually done with this. I'm hoping that it will paint the entire piece that I have here. But before I do that, let me show you something. When you're looking for a piece of furniture, make sure that they all have these these guides on the bottom of the drawers. If they don't, your drawer will not, when it slides out, it will fall forward. Make sure, I made that mistake several times, bought a piece, missing these. These are a booger to try and find to fit the piece of furniture. On the, uh, also, you want to make sure that these wooden pieces that this guide slides into are also in the piece of furniture that you're buying. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find it, and like I said, you don't just go to Lowe's and buy this. It's very difficult to find these. All right, so we are going to shellac, and we will fast forward this part so you don't have to watch me do the entire thing, but this is for the uh, second step because we've already cleaned it, and now we're going to shellac the piece. So all I do is I just put my paintbrush in this shellac, and give it a nice, even, thick coat. It dries super quickly, so you want to make sure that you do it fairly quickly because it will, it's just so tacky. It's just not fun to uh, paint with. And then go over it. And then I have completed that first drawer. Moving on to the second drawer. I meant to tell you earlier that a lot of times on the top there might be some rough spots so I will take a higher grade this is 220 versus the 320 and right here I noticed there's like a, a spot it almost looks like I don't even know what it is but I'm just gonna take my sandpaper and I'm just gonna go over that spot so when I paint it's gonna be smooth here's a spot here that's a raised spot so I'm gonna sand that and now it's smooth. Here's another one, and now it's smooth. Sometimes the imperfections are great, but that one right there, I didn't like the way it felt. Here's another one. Someone must have put some glue on there. Okay. Just a little quick. With this is with 220. Just real quick. Helps, since it's the top, you're gonna be setting things on top of it. You want to really make sure that it's nice and clean up there. And this will help the paint also to stick. I'm done with that. Wipe it down. Get that dust off. And now I will continue shellac. It's not tacky, it is ready to paint. So I'm gonna take my Annie Sloan Pure White Chalk Paint, shake it up, I've already used it, so it's been 
shaking quite well. Open that up. And I'm gonna let you see the inside of this paint. I used it yesterday. Well, I can't remember what I used it on, but anyway, you'll see that it is a nice, beautiful, white, thick paint. Here you see it on the lid. It's not even really, you can see how it's falling. It's, it's quite thick. So I'm gonna clean that lid off. This is my Featherline chalk painting brush. Don't wanna waste any of that paint. It's pretty expensive. Like I said, a little goes a long way. So you can see, I've just taken that off of the lid and show you how far that little bit goes over here on the first drawer. <clears throat> I'm gonna get my spray bottle. Add a little bit of water to my paintbrush to make that go further. That's a, actually a little bit thinner than I like the first coat to be, so I really did need a little bit more on there. But the second coat will fix it right up. All right, done with the first one. However, I do need to make sure it will drip on the sides, so clean that up. And of course, do the lip here. So, drawer one is complete. Move my chalk paint over here. You will see how quickly this goes. that I missed. So I'm just gonna go and make sure there's no drips on the side. Or sometimes I even miss this side altogether like I did here. So I need to fill it in. And here. And there. And then of course also the lip here, you wanna make sure that there's no drips there. I have one here. Okay, those are good to go. I'm gonna let those dry. Now I'm gonna start the base of the piece or the frame of the piece. And you can see I've barely made a dent in this chalk paint. It really, like I said, goes very far. I'm gonna move this further away from these pieces because sometimes I like to splatter and I don't want to splatter on my completed piece back there. So I'm gonna move it away from those pieces. I've done that before. All right, now I'm gonna start painting the frame of this French convention. sitting here during that entire process. While I was waiting for this to dry, I just stuck my wet paintbrush with the chalk paint in a damp cloth so I didn't have to wash the paintbrush off and it keeps it nice and moist. All right, so I'm gonna start on my second coat of chalk paint. You can see, I'm gonna show you in this can, I have barely made a dent. Can you see it? I have barely made a dent in this chalk paint. And so when we're done with this piece, the paint will probably be right here. And that's all I used on this piece right here. So you can see how far this chalk paint does go.
handle. So while the second coat of chalk paint is drying, I'm going to show you really quick how we paint the handle, the hardware. Very simple. I take a brush and I'm going to first brush off any lint or dust that's been on there over the years. I've already done those four. So just look at it carefully and make sure all that dust is gone. Okay, I've already done those four. I'm gonna use the Rust-Oleum rub, Oil Rub Bronze Spray Paint. It takes about two steps to do this because you can't do it all in one because of the way they're positioned. Nice, even coats. This stuff is strong, so try to breathe away. Turn it so I can get the top part. Okay, I'm gonna just let it sit there and dry. I'll come back and check it, see if there's any spots I need to touch up. Our second coat of chalk paint is completely dry, so we are now ready for the distressing part, which again is the part that brings out the character of the piece. I have my sandpaper right here. I use the 320 sandpaper and it's best to wear a mask because you don't need to breathe any of this. Sometimes I just wear a handkerchief. So I put my mask on and get started. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm going to really focus on the edges of the piece of furniture. So can you see it already coming alive? This is 320, if I had a harder grit, this would really, to me, tear it up, and I don't like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to this corner. The paint sometimes gets crackly. I love it when it does that. It adds more character to it. So I don't even worry about that. All right, can you see that? Let me dust that off so you can see better. So that is the look that I like and the paint, this chalk paint is so smooth, I love it. Now I will go on the top and just go over the entire top because it makes it smooth. But you'll see how quickly I do this. Like it takes less than a minute to do this whole top. That way if there's any dust in the paint, it comes right out. And so you have a nice smooth finish on top. All done. And that took less than, I don't know, two minutes maybe. So now let's go work our way down the piece. Any Sloan chalk paint distresses so beautifully. I have never worked with a product that gives such good results as the Annie Sloan chalk paint. It just dusts right off and gives you the look that you are desiring. You can just see it dusting away. And that's the look I like. Some chalk paints may give you a better look, a look that you like. This is just the look I like to use.
and you see it doesn't take much muscle either to dust it away. I'm still on my same piece of 320 sandpaper and I've completed the top as well as the front. On the flat surfaces, I really don't like to distress. It's really just the edges. So I will go over the side, but I really wanna just focus on these edges here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the flat surface. It gets rid of the brush strokes and smooths out that paint and gives it such a lovely feel. It's just so, it's just so smooth. And I'm still on my first piece of sandpaper. Okay, let's do this bottom. I'm gonna go ahead. I have gotten a new piece of sandpaper. That right there is an imperfection in the wood and I had to put some putty on it. It's not the best looking there, but it will do. And again, I am just quickly going over this. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just smoothing out the paint. And now where there is dimension in the wood, I like to bring that out. Move to the front. Just see it, it just comes alive. Look at that. Amazing, I love this. I know I keep saying that. So you have the antique wood popping through there. This is probably actually vintage, not this piece. All right, get the bottom. Here. And then I'll do the same thing to this side. Okay, I finished the whole piece, but I saved this part right here because I want you to see again how the distressing brings the piece out. See how I'm going, and some of it, the, it even sands past the stain on the wood and it even adds more dimension to it. And you saw how easy that was. It's very simple. To me, the key point is using a fine sandpaper. If this is the look you desire, if you like it more chunky, of course you're gonna need a, a lower grade sandpaper. And last here is the leg. I'm gonna get another piece of sandpaper. Get those edges. You can see in these drawers, it's got detail around the drawer. That is the part that I'm going to bring out in the distressing. transforming a piece of furniture. We're going to be using the General Finishes High Performance Top Coat. This is our sealer, which is gonna protect the paint. You'll be able to put a glass on here. You'll be able to decorate the top and not worry about the paint getting messed up or even scratched. I have the same paintbrush that I used to paint this. I washed it and I'm gonna take this exact same paintbrush and I'm now going to seal. We've dusted the piece. 
dipped that paintbrush in the sealer. Nice, clean, long strokes. This does dry very quickly, so you do need to work fast. Sometimes on the top, actually a lot of times, the top part of the piece, I will put several coats of sealer on. The rest of the piece, one coat to me is sufficient. It's been sufficient with all the pieces I've been doing. But because this one has more traffic, the top, I will put more than one coat. Go around the corner and make sure that the heavy overflow is cleaned up. because they need to be in the right spot. Sometimes they won't fit otherwise. So it's just easier than trying to figure it out. So this is our completed piece of vintage furniture, French Provencial, painted in Annie Sloan pure white chalk paint, sealed with general finishes, flat, high performance sealer, and we are complete. So you saw the before and now the after. You can put this piece just about anywhere. You can even put it in a bathroom if you wanted to for linen. So this is a perfect piece. Thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Let's go through, just recap real quickly what we did. First step was to clean it, dust it out. Second step was to shellac it. The reason we shellacked it is because it was going to be painted white. We didn't want the tannins and the wood to come through. Third step and fourth step was two coats of Annie Sloan chalk paint, followed by the distressing with the 320 sandpaper, very important, distressed the edges, dusted it off, and finally we sealed it with the high performance top coat. You saw how easy that was. And then we took the hardware off, spray painted it with oil rub bronze by Rust-Oleum. So that is all I have for you today. Our next project, which is going to be simple, is to take this very nice chair that's been beat up. You can see those scratch marks all over it, but it is solid. There's nothing missing. It's not wobbly. It's nice and, well, it's wobbly because my floor is fine even. However, it's not a wobbly chair, and it's, it's strong. So I'm going to take this uh, chair, and I'm going to paint it black to where you can add it to any ex uh, any room as an extra chair, put it in front of a desk, put it in uh, whatever you want, put it in the living room, whatever you want to do. But we're going to paint this uh, with general finishes, chalk paint called Black Pepper, and that is our next project. Please subscribe to me, Stephanie Camps, at Not So Shabby. Share my page. My goal here is to help people take a piece of furniture, an easy project, and transform something that looks ugly but make it beautiful. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Thank you.